All glories to some of the devotees, all glories to the assembly of devotees, glories to assembled devotees, Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we continue with the subject matter of the mind. And so this is uh, a verse from the 17th chapter called The Visions of Faith. And so these, uh, this is the recommended austerities spoken by Krishna about controlling the mind. Okay. Mana prasada samyatvam Maunam atmam vinigraha Bhava sam sudir ityetat Tapo manasam uchchate Mana prasada samyatva Maunam Atma Vinigraha Bhava Samsu Dear Ityatat Tapo Manasam Uchchate Mana Prasadam Samyatvam Maunam Atma Vinigraha 
Bhava Samsudir Ityetat Tapo Manasam Utschete Mana prasada, satisfaction of the mind, samyatvam, being without duplicity towards others, maunam, gravity, atma, of the self, vinigraha, control, bhava, of one's nature, Samsudi, purification. Iti, thus. Etat, this. Tapa, austerity. Manasam, of the mind. Uchchite, it's said to be. Hmm. Okay, so. Krishna, this is a series of verses talking about the different austerities. First, Krishna spoke about the austerities of the first austerities of the body and austerities of speech. Now he talks about austerity of the mind and satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-control, and purification of one's existence are the austerities of the mind. Purport. To make the mind austere is to detach, detach it from sense gratification. It should be so trained that it can be always it can be always thinking of doing good for others. We spoke about that. The best training for the mind is gravity in thought. One should not deviate from Krishna consciousness and must always avoid sense gratification. To purify one's mind is to become Krishna conscious. Satisfaction of the mind can be attained only by taking the mind away from thoughts of sense enjoyment. The more we think of sense enjoyment, the more the mind becomes dissatisfied. In the present age, we unnecessarily engage the mind in so many different ways for sense gratification, and so there is no possibility of the mind becoming satisfied. The best course is to divert the mind to the Vedic literature, which is full of satisfying stories, as in the Puranas and in the Mahabharata. One can take advantage of this knowledge and thus become purified. The mind should be devoid of duplicity, and one should think of the welfare of all. Silence means that one is always thinking of self-realization. The person in Krishna conscious observes perfect silence in this sense. Control of the mind means detaching the mind from sense enjoyment. So Prabhupada keeps making that point over here. You want to control the mind, if you want satisfaction of the mind, you have to pull it away from thinking about sense enjoyment. Major point. One should be straightforward in his dealings and therefore purify his existence. All these qualities together constitute austerities of the mind. And satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-controlled, and purification of one's existence are the austerities of the mind. Omigyan, timirandasya, gena jena, salakaya, chaksu unmilitam yena, tasmai shri, gurave namaha, nama om vishnu padaya, krishna prestaya bhutale, 
Shivakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Pancha Kalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadad Har Siva Siri Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare mm. So austerity means to get you off the bodily platform. So we have austerities of the body, austerities of speech, now we have austerities of the mind. And we've been f talking about how the mind works, what are some of the features of the mind, how to control the mind. So uh, what has to make the mind a friend? The mind, as we explained in the last two sessions, will always be independent and act according to its own desires. <clears throat> so one of the, f the first principle mentioned here is satisfaction. <laughs> To make the mind satisfied, uh, Prabhupada said, one can only make the mind satisfied by doing two things. Taking the mind away from thoughts of sense enjoyment. Um, when you think about sense enjoyment, then the mind starts to speculate and becomes uh, what we say, thinking about what kind of enjoyment I'm going to have in the future, what kind of enjoyment is available out there for me right now. So the mind becomes restless. And therefore, there's no end to this uh, restlessness due to focusing on the temporary. And then, of course, even if one tries to send, satisfy the senses, one feels uh, unsatisfied. So satisfaction, Prabhupada said, the best course to develop satisfaction is to devote the mind to hearing stories, pastimes of the Lord through the Vedic literatures. And this will give us a sense of understanding deeper of the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. But he uses the word stories. And nowadays we find People have a hard time with straight philosophy. When you speak philosophical teachings, it becomes uh, very difficult for people to understand, even if they try. Um, but when we try to encase or connect the philosophy with various types of pastimes of the Lord and his devotees, then it becomes more interesting and more easily understandable. So this is one of the ways to uh, attract the mind through the process of stories. Because even in this, in the material world, if you want to interest people, just tell stories. <laughs> Immediately, you get their attention. And people in the material world do that all the time. They're always talking about this story or that story or creating stories or giving life history about their different stories. So there has a certain, what we say, attraction just people like to hear. So the Vedic, you know, scriptures are just full of stories. Like we go through the Bhagavatam, it's like one pastime after another with the Lord and his devotees. And it becomes and then intertwined with the philosophical teachings that make up the, the activities that you're hearing about. It becomes both educating and at the same time uh, it brings a kind of a mental entertainment about how the story is playing out and how Krishna is dealing with his devotees, how the devotees are dealing with each other. So this is one way to find some satisfaction. As soon as we meditate on sense gratification or start thinking of sense gratification, we start to begin the process of fall down. As the verse says in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Dayato visayam pumsam 
Jayate su Sangat Sanjayate Sangat Sanjayate Kama Kama Kroda Bijayate Kroda Bhavati Samoham Samoham Sriti V Brahma Sriti Brahmsa Budinasa Budinasa Pranashyati. This is two verses from the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita contemplating sense objects. So this is where you have to be aware of what am I thinking of? Am I thinking of Krishna consciousness? Am I thinking of devotional service? Or am I contemplating about when can I enjoy some type of sense gratification upcoming or something that I enjoyed in the past or experienced in the past and trying to relive that in the mind? So one has to be very diligent, and this is called the austerities of the mind, just withdrawing it away from these things. Although the mind may find its tendency to be drawn that way, and that's the nature of the mind as we've been describing for the last two days. It's chanchala. It's always moving. We were describing yesterday how the mind doesn't stay in one place. It just keeps moving, moving, moving. So keep it moving in something that will uh, be will move your consciousness towards transcendent. As we explained, the mind and the, the soul are two different entities completely. One is material and subtle, the other is transcendental and spiritual. So keeping, uh, don't allowing that mind to drag you, the soul, to the material energy through contemplating sense. And then a certain satisfaction develops. To become satisfied is, is rare in this age because nobody is satisfied. People are working so hard just to find some satisfaction, but they don't even know what satisfaction is or begin to look what it. They think satisfying the senses means satisfaction, but actually the more you try to satisfy the senses, the less you become satisfied. That's actually the, the factor. The more you try to satisfy Krishna's senses, the more you become satisfied. Prabhupada uses the example, if you decorate, if you decorate Krishna, you also become decorated. If you feed Krishna, you also find satisfaction. Just like he uses the example, if you look into the mirror and you decorate your face, the face in the mirror also becomes decorated. So in the same way, when we serve Krishna and try to satisfy Krishna, there's a sense of satisfaction that we also develop because we are connected to Krishna through the process of bhakti. So the satisfaction, and of course, satisfaction also comes by doing nice service. When we do service, it comes out very nicely. We offer it to Krishna. There's a sense of satisfaction that comes to the heart and the mind. So we have to practice this austerity of satisfaction. And, and it can be easily done when we train the mind and to work according to the direction of the spiritual master's instructions. And then it becomes really easy. But the first principle is to get your mind away from sense objects. You know, we, we could be, the Prabhupada will tell the story. Uh, two men are walking, and they're on the way to the house of the prostitute. <laughs> so while they're walking along, they pass the Sankirtan party. It's out. So one of the boys, one of the men says, Oh, the devotees are there. I'm going to go to the Sankirtan party. The other one says, Ah, forget that. I'm going to the prostitute. So the, uh, so the one man, he goes to the sankirtan, joins in, and the other one goes to the prostitute. So when the, the one that had went to the sankirtan party, he's thinking, hmm, here I am, but my friend went to the prostitute, and he's really enjoying like crazy. And the other one is thinking, when he's at the prostitute's house, he's thinking, boy, my friend, he's really intelligent. He went to the sankirtan. <laughs> So who's better off? <laughs> you are where your mind is. 
You can be sitting in one place and your mind can be millions of miles away. <laughs> so keeping that mind connected to something in relationship to spiritual, and Prabhupada says here, um, try to take advantage of the satisfying stories found in the scriptures, which, which purifies the mind and also awakens our attraction for Krishna. The next one is simplicity. This is what we struggle with a lot. Of course, living in the ashram denotes simplicity automatically. But being simple and living simplicity is two different things. Of course, if you are simple by nature, you have a tendency to live simple. But living simple allows you for enough time to engage in devotional service. It also allows the mind to be focused more on the essence of one's progress in spiritual life. We find that people who have too many things or too many activities in life, we find it becomes very hard for them to practice spiritual life because they're diverted to so many other things. So being simple means to live according to your needs. And that verse is illustrated in the Sri Upanishads. Isha Bhashami Dham Sarvam Yat Kincha Jagam Tat Jagat Tena Jaktena Bunji Daha Magridaha Kasaswidanam. This is verse number one of Sri Upanishads. It says, Everything animate and inanimate is owned and controlled by the Supreme Lord. And one should live according to their quota. Everyone has a quota, what we need to keep body and soul together and go and carry on with our life. If we have too much activities or too many material things, it becomes a problem. So simplicity doesn't mean poverty. <laughs> simplicity means what you need to successfully practice Krishna consciousness and at the same time maintain your material body. Like that. That's all. Generally in this world, people define happiness by having more and doing more and being, you know, in other words, the more you do, the more you have, the more you get. It, the whole principle is more. Um, there, you, there was a, there's a bumper sticker because in America people have these bumper stickers on their cars, and it has different sayings. So one that was quite common for a while, and I used to laugh when I'd see this, because it was quite it was actually quite spiritual. <laughs> he used to say, "One who dies with the most toys wins." <laughs> One who dies with the most toys, they're the winner. <laughs> so what, what does that mean? That just accumulate as much as you can, and if you die with more than everybody else, then you're the best. <laughs> but it's, it's facetious. It's critical. It's actually saying that you're wasting your time collecting a bunch of stuff that you're going to yeah. die. <laughs> There's, um, there's a thing in America, it's a kind of a disease. America has every, all the problems of the world in one place. <laughs> and um, people have, there's Alcoholics Anonymous, there's Overeaters Anonymous, there's Sex Anonymous. These are people who are addicted to these different things. And then there's another one called sh Shopaholics. Shopaholics, just like alcoholic, shopaholics. And I have articles in newspapers, I've cut them out and saved them, where people spend all of their time in stores buying things. There was one lady, she, would, she was a secretary, and for her lunch hour, for one hour a day, she would go and spend an average of $400 just buying things. So people were addicted I mean, they, I mean, it's like, a, it's like an addiction. It's actually a disease that they have to go out and buy something. Something new, something different. If they don't, it's like, it's like difficult to live without doing that. 
So, um, just like when this one big political leader in Africa, well, I don't know, his name was Haile Selassie. You heard of him, Haile Selassie? He goes back many years. So, you know, he was killed. And then when they came into his quarters, his wife's room, they found in his wife's room 300 pairs of shoes. 300 pairs of shoes she had. So how many feet did she have? <laughs> That's like one for every day of the year, you know? <laughs> one pair. So it becomes a disease. People have to buy more because they're not satisfied in, within, and therefore they're looking for satisfaction without. The body has to find satisfaction within, and that means whether you have a lot by some definition, or you have a little, you can find happiness, satisfaction, because you have something that is not based on what you have either outside or inside. It's your relationship with Krishna. So that satisfaction within helps to bring about a type of lifestyle that becomes easy to execute Krishna consciousness, we become more simple. If you live in the ashram with brahmacharis, then you're forced to become simple because you can't really accumulate a lot of stuff. If you do, then the other brahmacharis will throw you out <laughs> because it becomes a problem for everybody. So you have to live simply. That's, that's one of the forced regulations of ashram life. But uh, being simple means what you see is what you get. And simple also means straightforward and ordinary dealings. A person who is duplicious, hypocritical, uh, what we say, tries to present themselves as something that they're not in order to impress people or to convince themselves also about themselves that there's something different than they actually are. Um, this is not Krishna conscious. Simple means what you see is what you get. <laughs> Devotees don't have any skeletons in the closet. <laughs> Devotees are, you see whatever you see, that's them. <laughs> it's like in public life, people have two lives. They have their public life and then they have their private life. But for a devotee, this, it, there's no such thing as public and private. Every, all life is the same. Why? Because they're, wherever they are or whatever they're doing, they practice Krishna consciousness. That's all. It's not about, you know, trying to present yourself to yourself or to others in a certain way in order to gain some recognition or some remuneration, something material. So simple is good. Simple helps you to become humble, and hum humility is the first principle that allows for one to execute devotional service. Gravity, this is another principle. Gravity means to think deeply about the philosophy of Krishna consciousness or to keep your, keep your thoughts on Krishna. One who, had, who was grave, one cannot tell their thoughts. Just like there was an example where one devotee had met Prabhupada in New Vrindavan. And he was saying to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I showed them a picture of you. And they say, oh, your spiritual master looks very unhappy. And I say, yes, he's unhappy because people in the material world are suffering from birth, death, disease, and old age. So Prabhupada said, do you have that picture? And he said, oh, yes, and so he pulled it out. And it was Prabhupada when he got his sannyas initiation, and he's like, very grave, you know, like that. So Prabhupada said, well, that was one of my most happiest times. <laughs> so one cannot tell the mind of someone who is grave. That's why it's hard to tell the mind of a devotee, because they're usually, in those who are fixed, they're usually thinking either how to serve the Lord or thinking about the Lord, either one. 
or they're thinking about some philosophical teachings that they read, or they're thinking about some something about something something about the activities of the Lord. So not only do they read it, they don't just read it and let it go; they think about it also. And then, then that causes one to develop this element of gravity. People in the material world have a hard time with this thing called gravity. Because when they try to become grave, they fall asleep. <laughs> Sometimes devotees also do that too. <laughs> Don't think too much because your mind will collapse, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that's gravity. And gravity is really one of the more important qualities of the mind. And the last one is self-control and purification of one's existence. So control of the self means to control the mind and senses and engage it in devotional service. Purifications of one's existence means live, living according to the principles that govern proper activity and devotional life. In other words, following rules and regulations and becoming purified. So these are the austerities of the mind. Um, one should practice them. And then the mind will be easily controlled. Otherwise, the mind will control you. And if you're controlled by the mind, you don't have any destination. <laughs> The destination is always wherever the mind takes you. And the Machanchala Himana Krishna Pramati Balabhadra it can take you anywhere and everywhere, all around the three worlds, up, down, into hell, into heaven. People, people imagine in the future so many nice things about life and think, boy, I'm going to do that, I'm going to be like that, I'm going to get that. So the mind will create so many illusions, uh, delusions, <laughs> and uh, wrong ideas. So be careful. Always keep that mind focused. And keep it on Krishna as much as possible. That's the idea. If you're thinking of Krishna, you're always in the best position, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. Okay, so we'll stop there. This is a little bit about the austerities of the mind. Last Yesterday we talked about the mirror of the mind, how the mind reflects inside what's outside. Today we talked about how to control that mind. Okay. Any questions or comments? Hare Krishna. Uh, you mentioned that uh, some people uh, wants to have more and more, and and is the the opposite of someone who is like a minimalist, or is just this some basic to cultivate the simplicity? Can you repeat that once again? I missed a few. Of them. Is this that if you want to have more and more things? Yeah. Yeah, is, yeah, and if the, this uh, less is more or minimalist, minimalism is just the opposite side of this having uh, to have more or is just this some... Uh, it's the way to live, to minimize things to your very basic needs like that. You should always be thinking, you know, what, what are the things I don't need? What are the things I can give away? Maybe others can use them. And the more, the more you have, to, the more you have to maintain like that. Um, of course, you know, there are people who have different standards of li life. Some live a little bit more opulent than others. And that's not a disqualification. It's just, you just have to determine what works for you best. But the, the, the problem is, in this age, Everything is being pushed in a certain direction, is to accumulate more, to get more. More is better. 
Yeah, more is better. This is the this is the mantra. More is better. I, maybe in your country, which is was somewhat isolated from the world due to the communist regime, it wasn't so much like that. But in most Western countries, the whole idea of capitalism just pushes people into the buying frenzy. Just like now, Christmas is coming up, and so people. Are, um, are frantic about what to buy. They just have to buy something for somebody, you know. So the, the Christmas spirit is lost. The spirit of giving, the, the spirit of fellowship, friendship, and uh, worshiping of the Lord and honoring the Lord's pure devotee, Jesus Christ, that has got submerged in the ideas of what does my grandfather need? You know, I have to go shopping. <laughs> I have my Christmas list, <laughs> like that. And this is the time where all the stores, you know, open up and sell so much. They make so much during the Christmas season that it keeps them in profit for the whole year, even though the rest of the year is not even as half as good as Christmas. That's in big Western countries. I don't know how big it is here. It has some element here, but not like countries like, you know, London or UK, United States, where it's a frenzy. Uh, now with the lockdown and the COVID, things have been tempered a little bit, so I don't know how it will play out this year. But now online shopping will go crazy. You know. And uh, they're already complaining that even if you do online shopping, you may not get your Christmas gift in time, you know, because the mail services cannot keep up with everything. Yeah. So you might get your Christmas gift next year for this year. This year. <laughs> Boy, I got my Christmas gift in June. Wow, isn't that nice? <laughs> it's a nice pair of woolen socks. Perfect, perfect for the month of June, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you know nothing makes sense materially here it's just you know, you know it's just like chaos so minimizing is good uh, personally I just love to throw th when I put something in the garbage pail I get, I get I get shots of ecstasy running through my body <laughs> <laughs> I really start feeling happy and it's almost like I'm dancing in kirtan, you know. <laughs> I just I just love to throw things away and give things away. <laughs> I usually have too much anyway, so I have to keep doing that. <laughs> Cuz people will, if you're a sannyasi, people will make sure you have everything and more. <laughs> Yeah, I just like today, you know, I, I just say, I, I'll just tell you this today, what happened today. So I have this bottle of um, liquid zinc, and I just barely broke into it. I have a full bottle. So, you know, somebody sent it to me about a month ago. So I just started to use it just recently. So today I got a package, and I opened it up, and it was two more bottles of liquid zinc. <laughs> So now I have three bottles. <laughs> That's what was in that box. <laughs> so yeah, everyone makes sure that you have, that the sannyasis look like everybody else. You know. <laughs> so, but we have to be very diligent to make sure that these things. When Prabhupada would get something, like someone would give Prabhupada a, a watch. So one time, so one time Prabhupada would get got a watch, and then he would keep it. He would use it for like a few months or maybe a little longer, and then give it away. They give him a jacket, he wear it, and then he give it away. They give him a ring or something, and he give it away. Prabhupada, he would use. Because he would always accept people's gifts, but then after some time, he would give it away. 
like that. And the one time when devotee came and he didn't have much clothes, Prabhupada said, "Go over to my cabinet there and pick out some pick out a kurta for yourself." <laughs> so yeah, Prabhupada would do that. He gave things away a lot, first on a personal level. So if you need anything, come on over. <laughs> So this is the, you have to we have to somehow or other downsize our material things and at the same time simple means simple in mind really not complicated there are people who are complicated um, they they overthink everything and they can't really live life in a normal way we were running a preaching center in in um, <clears throat> in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. So um, Radhana Swami would come regularly and he would give classes and I would give classes. And we were right on the university campus. So we, people would come from the university. So one very uh, educated, highly intellectual professor came to see us. And he got interested, so he started, we would have programs every night and invite guests for for a Bhagavad Gita lecture, and then we offer a little prashat. So he was coming every night, and then he would ask questions, and we would try to give him the answer, but he couldn't understand the answer. His answer, his response to our answer was another question. So, Radhana Swami was thinking, what, what can we do with this guy? You know, he's very intelligent, but he, you know, he just can't get it. <laughs> he was probably what call it over-intelligence. <laughs> it's like if I tell you, point to your nose, and you go like this. You don't go like this. This is an indication of, you know, some this complicated mental activity. So we decided, all right, we got to do something. He, he's interested, but he can't really get anything. <laughs> so we devised, Maharaj actually devised this idea. He said to him, do you know how to make, do you know anything about gardening? He said, oh yeah, I know gardening very good. We said, all right, we have a, we have a backyard that needs a garden for the deities. So why don't you come? Uh, do you have time tomorrow? Yeah, he said, I'm off tomorrow. Okay, so come and make a garden for the deities. So he came early in the morning, and, and we gave him everything he needed, and he was out there working the whole day in the garden. And in the night when he came in for the class, he was like a little kid. He was like really happy. <laughs> he became simple, and he was just, you know, sitting there and smiling. So... Um, you know, we asked him, you know, how did it go? He said, oh, it was just wonderful. I got so many realizations about Krishna consciousness. I got so many ideas. And I was just really finding it really interesting and a lot of fun just making that garden. So we said, hey. So we thought, okay, now, well, he's getting better, you know. <laughs> so he said, all right, well, continue. Tomorrow you can do the same thing. So the next day he went out and he did the same thing, stayed there the whole day. And at night he came back and he was really unhappy. He was completely different. He couldn't, he, he said, I don't know what went wrong. I did everything just the way I did it the day before, but I, I don't feel the same way. So you see the problem? He was uh, empirically analyzing that if you do things in this way, this happens. <laughs> so he was mechanically going through the motions of activity and determining that this is the way you become happy. So he tried that again the second day, trying to pattern himself the way he did the first day. But Krishna says, I don't work like that. <laughs> the first day he was just out there doing it, the second day he was trying to reproduce the same feelings by doing the same activities. 
and it didn't work. So he was like intellectualizing the whole process of bhakti, like that, you know. So yeah, so this is an example of complicated thinking. You know, so we have to learn how to uh, think simple. Just like, you know, I'll give you an example. People are this one, just like, um, I can say to someone, um, do you have some time today to do this? Well, you know, at two o'clock I have to go meet this person because this person is very important. He has to see me and he owes me some money and when I'm gonna get that money, I have to take it to the bank and then I have to go down and make sure I get the deposit before the bank closes, and then I have to go home and uh, take care of this. I just asked you, do you have any time? <laughs> See, it's like when you ask a simple question, you get, you know, you get an essay, a PhD essay, you know. <laughs> Come on, just answer the question. <laughs> I don't need to have your life story. You don't have to show me your birthmarks. I just want to know. <laughs> I just want to know if you have some time. <laughs> so we we have a tendency to overthink and to complicate even the simplest of matters like that. That's why they say, um, truth spoken concise and concisively is true eloquence. Mm -hmm. Truth spoken concisively is true eloquence. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? You can speak the truth, if you speak the truth in the smallest amount of words, but include everything in those smallest amount of words, that is eloquence. Or what's eloquence means perfection of speech. Mm -hmm. You'll see that in writers. Writers, there's certain people who can write. They can say a lot in a few words. And then there's other writers that have to keep writing words in order to make a point. That's an art. So, yeah. So that's also an ele a principle of simplicity. It's also a principle of gravity, too. Okay, so any other comments or questions? The mind? Okay, so we still have five minutes. No? All right, and then we'll end here. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Shrimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Yeah.